This is the current fastest gold farm in single player Minecraft, but today I'm going to attempt to shatter its record with my brand new design that more than triples the gold per hour. When I started this journey two years ago, I had no idea it would be the hardest project I ever took on, so here's how I did it. Let's start with step one gather the resources for the farm. Let's start with shulker boxes. We need them because this farm produces over 200 chests of gold nuggets per hour, and unless we want the storage looking like this, we need shulker box loaders. So let's finally build a shulker farm. This shulker farm designed by ending credits may look finished, but it won't actually work until we put a shulker into it to power it. So let's go to the end and kidnap a shulker. I just found this end city, and now I have to bring a shulker from it to the overworld. To do this, I'm going to build a little roller coaster for the shulker to ride. Now I just need to steal a shulker and send it down the railway. Alright, this should work fine. Oh, it went through. Now we bring it from the end gateway to the end portal. Go. Now the shulker's somewhere at world spawn. Oh, there he is. We did it! And now we have to bring the shulker from the world spawn to just outside the spawn chunks. So let's get a shulker into a minecart for a second roller coaster ride. Oh my gosh, they duped again. They're out of control, guys. There are too many. <laughs> we have to abandon the land. And now... Okay, we got him on the track. Go! Yes! The reason we're bringing the shulker to here is because these are my spawn chunks, and they're always loaded, and shulkers count towards the mob cap, meaning if I build this farm in my spawn chunks, I'd never have monsters again, which I don't want, yet. It teleported. Now the farm should be working. Duplicate. Duplicate, I say to you. Now that the shulker farm is done and producing us shulker shells, I'm gonna chunk load it so it works when I'm not around, but I can still turn it off when I want hostile mobs to spawn. This farm isn't that fast, so let's go get other materials and we'll see how many shulker shells I got later. We still need shulker boxes though, and to craft the shulker shells into shulker boxes, we need something else. Slime. Huh? And that probably makes no sense, but it will soon. You might remember that I have a slime farm, but it literally gets me like 20 slime balls per hour, so since I need hundreds of slime balls, I'm just gonna build a much better slime farm designed by Sane Dragon. So let's get the materials for it. Actually, I already have everything except for glow lichen, so let's get that. Oh, sick, glow lichen. I guess slime farms require glow lichen now, so we're gonna build a little glow lichen farm. This is not the slime farm, believe it or not. Let's try out this nice little guy. I needed, I think, like eight stacks of glow lichen or something for this, so I should be good. We've now gathered all the stuff that we need to build the slime farm, so we're just gonna go find a really far away swamp to build it in. Okay, so we just just found a swamp biome. <gasps> Yo! Frog party? What's up, guys? After I finished dancing with the frogs, I started digging a big hole for the slime farm to go in. Over there? I think so. The TNT did an okay job clearing this area, but I gotta clean it up manually. The reason I'm digging this hole is because slimes only spawn between Y51 and 69 in swamp biomes, so the hole is needed for the farm to work. Now I'll build the actual farm. This is most of it done, but now I have to build the nether side since this farm uses the nether to get the slimes up to the player's AFK spot so they can kill the slimes with looting. So we have to go and jump through this portal to build the nether side of things. Don't die. Protect me, true love undying. Oh my! Balls time. Everyone gather around. Bro's the slime king? Oh no, I'm not the slime king. Now let's build the nether side. Now we build the overworld side and then our slime farm will be done. Let's go ball production time, guys. Look at all those balls getting produced. Oh my, isn't it beautiful? So I left the farm running overnight and let's see how many balls I got. Ball check, ball reveal. <laughs> Hopefully we have loads of balls because I love balls. Slime balls, of course, I'm talking about. Get your head out of the gutters, guys. We have 105,000 837 balls. Now that I have slime balls, I can get loads of shulker boxes. Here's how. My wood farm needs bone meal to work, and in 1.19.3, Mojang broke my mob farm, so now I don't have a supply of bone meal to power my wood farm, so I also don't have wood to craft shulker boxes. So to fix my wood problem, I'm using my slime blocks to make Amelia's moss farm, and the moss will be composted into bone meal, and then the bone meal can power the tree farm. These two farms are built in my spawn chunks, and they don't need a player nearby to run, so they'll work infinitely while I'm playing my world. Now that I I have wood being produced and tons of shulker shells, we have shulker boxes. While my wood's being produced, let's go get the other stuff for this farm. Okay, next, I need 34,000 obsidian. And I have... 
none. So let's get some. I'm gonna use withers to get the obsidian because bartering for it is insanely slow and I learned that in this video. But I have this sand duper in my stronghold and I don't want to tear it down. So instead I found a new stronghold for the obsidian farm so I can leave the overworld side of the sand duper alone. Now I'm gonna build ENXO4's obsidian farm and I'll have to destroy the end side of the sand duper but it's literally just a bunch of hoppers so I don't care. But what I do care about is you hitting that subscribe button. All right. Now we just run over here. So now it's working and producing 32,000 obsidian per hour. So I only need to AFK for a bit over an hour to get all the obsidian for this farm. But I wanna put my sand duper back. So I'm gonna AFK overnight until I have more obsidian than I could ever use. Then I can put my sand duper back. Okay, change of plans. I look down and now I'm scared that I'll die if I leave this alone. So rather than staying up all night to make sure nothing happens to me, I'm just gonna build a different obsidian farm that doesn't dangle the player above the void. So I tore down the other farm and started building Scorpio's obsidian farm. It also generates 32,000 obsidian per hour, so I used my newly acquired shulker boxes for a shulker box loader. We just finished setting up Scorpio's obsidian farm. We have five minutes to summon in our wither, and then we are gonna put these three skulls in, and then we just need to get far enough away that it hopefully will not attack me. Oh! Oh, it's working! Now I can AFK overnight, far away from the Wither and the Void. While I AFK, let me explain why this obsidian is so crucial. Minecraft spawns mobs near the player until there are 70 in the world. So to get more to spawn in, we have to get rid of the existing ones as fast as possible. The less time the piglins are around, the more gold we get. Every gold farm tries to get rid of piglins quickly, but none compare to how fast the Glossarifies gold farm does it. It gets rid of them so quickly because it has piglins spawn inside nether portals, meaning the instant they appear, they get teleported to the overworld world, letting more spawn in. So the obsidian is for building loads of nether portals like in the Glossarifies farm. But Dashpum, I thought this was your design. Well yeah, it is, because I made some huge changes to this farm to make it faster and to make it actually work for me, because right now, it doesn't work at all. But we'll get into the changes later. For now, let's see how much obsidian I have after a night of AFK. Oh, how much is this? 235,000 obsidian. So we need 33,000 obsidian? Bam. Next thing we need is glass. So I grabbed sand and put it into my auto smelter and in a few minutes I had all the glass I need. Gold blocks and beacons, blue ice. Well, I can craft it. How much uh, blue ice can, I oh. Okay, we gotta go and mine ice. Global warming is real, and his name is Dashpum4. I'm gonna need that ice block, buddy. Blue ice. We need smooth stone. All right, we're gonna put that in there. And now it's done. And the wood farm's been working in the background, and now we have all the wood I need. So now we have pretty much everything we need to build this gold farm, except I've been lying to you. I actually haven't designed the farm yet, so we need to do that before I can build it. Like I said earlier, the Glotzerify's design doesn't work for me, so let's fix that. It doesn't work for me because it requires one player to sit in the nether to spawn the piglins, and one player to sit in the overworld and kill them. And as you can see, I am only one man. So what if I used my big brain and made the player that sits in the nether to spawn the mobs also kill them? So that's that was actually very easy. All I had to do was take the killing chamber and move it from the overworld to the nether and put it at the AFK spot. Then I put a nether portal that piglins would teleport to in the overworld and added a water stream that brings the piglins to a different nether portal that teleports them up to the killing chamber in the nether. And then I modified the killing chamber to get higher rates, but we'll get to that later. For now, we have a new issue. The lag. It is awful. So let's fix it. Alright, it's been a few months and I am stumped. I think the lag is caused by the 1000-ish piglins in the world at a time, and there's no way around them, so I think it's over. I've been watching you work on the farm, and I think that the lag is actually caused by the nether portals. As the theory goes, every single time an entity goes through a nether portal, the game checks all nearby nether portals to figure out which nether portal it should send the entity to. That causes the problem that for every entity that goes through a portal, there are over 1500 nether portals of the game to check when the zombie piglins are returning to the nether from the overworld, and so that causes a ton of lag. Oh my gosh, it's doable then? Oops. So Zardor and I got to work. We realized that if we shifted the killing chamber two chunks over, the game would no longer check any of the spawning platform portals when teleporting the piglin to the killing chamber. This drastically reduced the lag, but created another problem that we'll talk about later. For now, I have some more stuff to gather for the new design before we actually start building it. Cobblestone walls, 51 powered rails. We need to get powder snow. Look at those beautiful powder snow textures. Powder snow. Soul soil. Next, I need a bunch of wither roses for this farm, so chicken pit time. This is too slow. 
Oh. I'm putting this wither right next to the chickens and hopefully the wither's spawn explosion will kill them and give me the wither roses I need. You were supposed to kill them all instantly, buddy. Kill the chickens, thank you. These guys are so easy to kill, man. There are a couple chickens that escape to up here. You either die to the wither or you die to the lava. Good. I didn't get enough wither roses with the chickens, so now I'm gonna sacrifice some snow golems to the wither. So we have like 10 snow golems down there, I think. So if we place the wither like right here, will it kill all of them instantly? Bam. I'm gonna move over here. Oh, it did not kill them. Why did it not kill them, bro? Get him, Wither. Dude, he's getting absolutely owned by these snow golems right now. After the Wither finally won the war against the snow golems, I realized, oh, I got enough. Let's go. Then I somehow lost all the powder snow I got, so I had to go get it again. Now, the final thing I need is tons of redstone components, and I don't have a raid farm yet, so I'm gonna void trade with cleric villagers for all the redstone I need. Now I have loads of redstone and we can craft everything else we need. So we have everything we need to build this gold farm, so let's move on to step two, building the farm. First, we have to find a spot for it. It needs to be far away from other portals so the linking doesn't mess up, so I made this ice path that takes us really far away from everything else. So let's see if we can find four chunks that are entirely nether waste. They need to be nether waste because zombie piglins spawn more in nether waste Biomes, so the spawning area of the farm is built in that biome. Okay, perfect. These four chunks are gonna have portals built in them, and they're all nether waste biomes. So to build the farm, I'm using the mod light Matica, which puts a hologram of what you need to build into your world. I'm using this because even though I designed this farm, I have goldfish memory and don't remember how to build it. And I haven't made a tutorial on the farm yet, so I can't follow my own tutorial. But hopefully by following the schematic, I can build this correctly first try. And here, I'm just aligning the schematic to the chunk border so the portals will link correctly once they're built. All right, now I just have to build 5,000 portals. No big deal. One portal down. Then I built the rest of the portals, and as you can see, I did it in three seconds. I'm kind of stupid, and this guy is supposed to be one block over here, and so is this entire thing. Since I really don't want to rebuild the spawning platforms, I'm going to go to the overworld and place all the portals. That way I can check if me building the nether side wrong will mess up the linking of portals. So all these portals in the nether should teleport to these portals in the overworld, but if these portals in the overworld don't exist, the portal will try to link to an already existing portal if it's close enough. So we build this one portal in the overworld right in the middle of where all the portals want to teleport to. This way they'll all teleport to the central portal. So to test if they link, we can go through the bottom corner portals because these portals are the furthest from the overworld portal. So if they link, then all the others will link too. So if I go right here, it should theoretically take me to... Oh, it did! Okay, sick. Okay, let's try this one, please. Yes, nice. Please link, please, please these. Oh, let's go. All right. Okay. So the portal linking is good. And now I need to build the killing chamber. This was simple, but now comes the hard part. Remember earlier, we talked about how nether portals are amazing because they get the piglin out of the mob cap instantly letting more spawn in. Well, when I modified the farm to only use one player, I had to make the piglins come back into the nether and this adds them back to the mob cap and stops more from spawning. But earlier, I also mentioned that I modified the killing chamber to get higher rates. This modified killing chamber was created by MD and nearly doubles the rates of the farm. It does this by having piglins get into nearby boats instantly as they come through the portal. Mobs and boats don't count towards the mob cap, letting more spawn in, increasing our rates. So let's place some boats. They come through and they'll land on the left side of the portal, so we put all the boats on the left side. Let's try to put these boats in. I forgot to break the portal. Time to place a whole bunch of boats. All right, light this. We just need to break this portal. And then we're gonna, oh, that was not the right thing to do. And then we're gonna go, bam. And then we're gonna, bam, bam. All right, those guys fell. Now we break the bottom one. Back, like, oh, oh, Jesus, I'm so stupid. No, why did I do that? I have to clean up a million boats now. Let's break this guy getting me to actually be productive oh lord oh please please stop it please stop let me out 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 oh no 
Oh. I eventually got the boats into place, and now onto the next step. I mentioned earlier that fixing the lag created a new problem. The spawning platform portals and killing chamber portal are really far apart, so we're gonna bring the piglins from here to here, and they need to be loaded while we move them, so we're gonna build chunk loaders. So to have an on-off switch for the chunk loaders in the nether, I have to break some bedrock. So I don't have TNT to break bedrock, so I'm trying to use redstone lag to break the bedrock, but it's really slow and isn't working consistently. Oh, this one worked. One of them worked. A chatter just showed me a new way to break bedrock and it's working so insanely well. I breezed through the bedrock breaking and the only downside of this method is that 1.20 fixed it, but I did this in 1.19. So I gotta dig this hole all the way down to the bottom of the nether, but I don't wanna die to lava. So let's go grab some fire resistance potions that I brewed in the last video. So we just dug all the way down to here and now we just need to dig out a little area to put all of our chunk loaders. Digging out this area took me like five seconds, but now we have to dig out the area for the overworld chunk loaders. Unfortunately, since one block in the nether equals eight blocks in the overworld, the chunk loaders in the overworld are really spread out. Worse than that, the chunk loaders have to be at the very bottom of the overworld to link correctly, which means I have to destroy loads of deep slate. I did have to be careful though, because there was a deep dark biome right near my tunnel. What are you talking about, scared? You're the one who's scared. Oh. Let's go, achievement unlocked. Eventually, I realized that I should use moss to make the deep slate instaminable, and this sped up the process a lot. I fully excavated this area. It's gonna be a little tricky to get these command blocks, but I'll find a way. Now that I'm done digging, I built the chunk loaders in the overworld and nether, and they work. Now we just need to make an on-off switch for the chunk loaders. So we're gonna send a signal through the hole we dug earlier, and to send the signal, we're gonna use these walls. How it works is we move this wall at the top and it updates all the walls below it. Then we have an observer at the bottom that turns the chunk loaders on or off. Now we're fully done with the chunk loaders and onto the most important part of the gold farm, the overworld bridge. This complex bridge we designed pushes piglins from the spawning platform portal to the killing chamber portal really quickly. And to make this bridge work, we need more boats. These boats are important because if you position them perfectly, they'll take piglins out of the nether portal and put them into the scaffolding that brings them to the overworld bridge. Now, we just need to do our best to get all the boats in place. Break the bottom boat. Drop this guy. We can now break this, and then we're gonna push. Now we just have to do that on the other side. Oosh. Yes, I have gotten my boats in place. So now what we need to do is we need to place in some stairs. One more thing that we have to do is light this portal. The boats are still there, let's go. Now I have to build two more of these. All three of these guys are done. We are going to start building this massive entity conveyor that goes all the way into the distance. And now we're done. And the farm should be functional, even though it doesn't have a collection system yet. But the farm isn't working. So apparently doing my best was not enough. In order to show why this is the problem, we're gonna make a copy of this world and then we're gonna hop into it. All right, let's hop into this world. It's not the real hardcore world, it's just a backup. So when I go into creative mode, oh my, he's cheating. So here's what the problem is. At this location, the boat spits the piglins back into the nether portal most of the time when it's supposed to spit the piglin into the scaffolding. What I discovered, if I place this in, literally like five blocks to the side, but now it's on a chunk border so that the portal is in one chunk and this block is in another chunk. Now you'll see every single time they're gonna get into the right place. So you know what that means? We gotta move this whole thing four blocks over to the side. Let's go. One problem though, all the items from breaking the bridge are falling and I need to pick up all of them to rebuild the bridge, but they fall between the bamboo, so you know it's a really good idea? We should burn down this forest so that it's way easier for me to collect all the blocks at the bottom. I've been suggested a more efficient way to burn down this forest. All right, let's go to right here. So the strat is to pour lava off the top of tall trees and the lava flows down and burns everything around it. And this strat worked really well. Just look how clear this area is. Now let's break this bridge. We have finally destroyed the whole thing. Now we need to rebuild it four blocks forward. Can I use an armor stand to test if this is working? Now if I turn this on, this armor stand should go flying down the thing. Let's see, if the armor stand is in there, that means that it made it, we'll see. Oh! 
The armor stand is in there. Let's go. So all we have left to do then is light all the portals and then build the collection system way over there. Oh, I'm pretty sure this is the final portal that we have to light. The farm semi-operational because it doesn't have a sorting system yet, but it should maybe work. This should be working. We are at 50 MSPT. We're climbing. Yay. That's what I wanted to happen. Something is clearly not working with it. Okay, we have the same issue as before, which I don't understand because I thought I fixed it. Well, I thought wrong! Remember how I spent hours tearing down and rebuilding the overworld bridge a few blocks to the side? Well, I actually didn't have to do that. The reason the piglins aren't going into the scaffolding has nothing to do with the chunk border like I said earlier. It's actually that boats kick mobs out of them in whatever direction they're facing, and I put the boats facing the nether portal when they should have been facing the other way. So for the second time, I have to rebuild the nether portal boat system. And this time, I'm gonna do it right. And now that this is finished, we can test the farm. Oh my gosh, the game is running at 20 TPS. There's still no collection system, so all the items are just falling here. Dude, that was in like five seconds! And that amount of gold means to me that the farm is working correctly. So now we're done with step two and on to step three, profit. And to profit from this farm, we need to collect the loot. So let's use those shulker boxes we got and set up a collection system. Oh my gosh, when I moved the other thing four blocks to the side, it moved this as well. And now this is four blocks out of place. Ah! Oh. So I shifted the sorting system over by four blocks and now I need to put tons of shulker boxes into the farm. And now I can collect the loot. So let's AFK at this farm overnight and see how much gold I get. We have just like a little bit of gold after running the farm overnight. So now step three is completed and we're on to step four get revenge. And if you're wondering who I'm getting revenge against, it's zombified piglins because they killed me in my last hardcore world. And I got revenge on them by killing a million of them, but honestly, killing them was letting them off easy. So I want to build a gold block city for piglins to live in for eternity. And that sounds pretty nice. But guess where the gold is coming from? This means that wherever they go, they're stepping on their dead friends and family. So to build this city, I need a ton of gold blocks. Lucky for me, wait, this is all nuggets, and it's going to take me hours to craft craft all this into blocks. So instead of spending two hours crafting gold nuggets into blocks, I'm gonna spend 20 hours designing an unrivaled auto crafting system. You gotta be kidding me. Well, the crafter isn't out yet, so we still need a way to craft all the nuggets into blocks. Fortunately, I'm really good at Minecraft. How are you doing that? I'm like the Flash, and I'm so quickly crafting that you can't even see me moving. Just kidding, I'm using a mod that makes the player craft really quickly. The mod is limited though, so we have to do the crafting in two stages. First, we craft all the nuggets into ingots, and second, we craft all the ingots into blocks. But it isn't that simple. As I craft the ingots, the mod throws them out of my inventory, and as they build up, my PC goes boom. So we need to do something with the ingots as we craft. So here's what I came up with. The ingots get picked up by hopper minecarts that roll into an unloaded chunk where they won't cause lag. When I'm done with stage one of crafting, I flick this lever. This lever makes you subscribe and also makes these machines push hopper minecarts into a loaded chunk one at a time. Then the minecart gets broken and the ingots are brought to the player who crafts them into blocks. This means there aren't many items in the world at a time, which stops my computer from being a jet engine. So let's add the crafting station to the item sorter and get to crafting. The crafting station works great, but unfortunately, when I designed it, I didn't account for me being an idiot. I accidentally broke the crafting machine several times, and while fixing it, I burned a lot of the gold, so overnight I should have gotten around 30 shulker boxes of gold blocks, but I actually only got 10. That's still more than enough for the gold block city, so let's get to work. I'm building walls around the city, so piglins will be trapped here forever, even though I have no idea why they'd want to leave. And now, I'm building some lovely houses for them to live in, but you can't forget doing some interior design. So we're gonna make a nice little gold block bed, little gold block chest, some gold block furnaces. Wow, look at this beautiful home. And now the gold block city is done, but we just need some piglins to live in it. The plan. We're gonna set up a spawning platform down here. We're gonna wait up there. Lots of pigmen are we're gonna spawn. Oh, see, we got a few of them there. We're gonna name tag them. Hey guys. Bam, bam. But these names are pretty boring, so leave name suggestions in the comments for them and your name could permanently be in my world. And now we're gonna punch one of them. And then I'm just gonna lead a little train all the way to over there. Okay, we got him in. If I come over here and I just do a nice little one of them, Hee hee, they're trapped forever. Welcome to your new home, everyone. Now step four is done and we move on to the most important step. You clicking here to watch the whole series or clicking here for more piglin torture. Also click like and click subscribe. Thanks for watching.